maybe in one sentence. How would you love to be remembered? What words would you like people to say when they think of you or they think about you? I would like them to remember me for the lessons they got from me. You know, sometimes it's people that I didn't say anything to, but maybe they were watching. You know, I want them to, to have good memories of me and to say, you know, uh, if it were not for, you know, that old lady or whoever, yes. I wouldn't be where I am now. Hello, my name is Velindaba, the neuroengineer, and I'm all about transforming minds from a place of mental darkness to mental light. And this is all that I'm about. And it's such an exciting moment for me, you know, before I introduce our, our guest uh, today, where we'll be talking about the importance of taking good care of yourself, the importance of you know, uh, uh, respecting yourself. And, and, and because you cannot achieve much if you don't really respect yourself and you don't take good care of yourself. We've heard of the saying that if you don't eat your food as medicine, later on you end up eating medicine as food. So what does that really mean? This simply means that if you do not eat your food every day, as medicine, you don't eat well, you don't feed yourself with good diet, what tends to happen is that later on in your life, you're going to be pushing those trolleys full of medicine because you're going to be eating that medicine as food. So what's important right now is to really understand how we really go about doing these things and uplifting ourselves so that we can have longevity in our lives. And really, I would like to introduce our guest for today, and that is Miss Magaganyo Mashile, uh, who has been a pharmacist for the longest time, and she will tell us more about that. Miss Mashile. Hi, Profili. Good morning to you. Good morning to you too. It's such a great pleasure and honor, you know, for us to have this session, and I think it's something that I've long been looking forward to, and I'm so glad that today, we are here, we've made the time just to really connect. And, and, and I think there's so much wisdom that I'd like to get, to get from you and for our audience as well, just to pick up those things and just, you know, to pick up some, some, some nuggets of wisdom and, 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 and get to understand in terms of how they can be able to take good care of themselves and how they can look at things differently. Please, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the chance to yeah. talk to your audience and to you, Bravili. I am Makakanyo Rosalyn Sibabato Mashile. Um, I'm a retired pharmacist. I'm 71 years old and I still feel good about my life and my health. So uh, I realized long ago in my 20s when I first became a pharmacist that it is important to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. both uh, physically and mentally and also spiritually. Yeah. So I, I have always tried to share the knowledge that I have with other people here at home and when I was in exile in Botswana. For the ladies, I even had some lessons about uh, beauty care, you know, uh, the routines that one should follow from a young age. Yeah. Don't wait until when your skin is wrinkled and then only then start trying to repair it because <laughs> usually you'll fail. So it's always better to start young whether wow. it's exercises, yoga, or whatever, and those beauty regimes that we're talking about. Wow. It's better to start them whilst we are young. This is what I'm talking about, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really so honored and, and, and privileged, once again, uh, you know, just to have you, 
you know, just to share some some insights and some exciting perspectives on how one can really look after themselves. And 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 we've just touched on this. I mean, you are a retired pharmacist. Maybe w w can you just share with us, you know, maybe before we get into you becoming a pharmacist, you know, how, how was it like for you, you know, growing up? Who, where did you grow up? You know, where were you born and where, where did you grow up? And, and how was it like, you know, what did you see around you that influenced you to become later on a pharmacist? Okay, I was born in Orlando East in Soweto the part that is called Mlam Langunzi because mm. it had a bad reputation of people being robbed. Babanjwa in Kunzi in Mlam Langunzi. So it was so rough that <laughs> even boys in the street, when they wanted to maybe propose love to you and then you tell them you live in Mlam Langunzi, they'll say, okay, <laughs> bye bye, Sisi. <laughs> See you next time. You know, th th that's where I grew up. And a lot of people, they were not educated. I mean, the older generation, our parents, like mine, they ended up in primary school. And, you know, we're struggling, but we didn't know that we're struggling because at that time we used to share whatever we had, food, clothes, we borrowed and lent uh, some to our friends and neighbors if they had to go to a, a function or something. And it was okay. We felt like one big family in Mlam Langkunze. So I started school uh, early, at five years. At that time, we blacks were not allowed to start school at five years old. We had to start at a minimum of seven years if you're going to turn eight during the year. And again, this is funny, you had to be able to hold your ear, your hand above your head and touch your, the bottom of your ear. So even if you're eight years or nine years and you happen to have short arms, you're not going to start school. You're going to start very, very late. So how I started early is because my sister, the firstborn at home, was seven in uh, 1958 because she was born in 1950 and she was going to turn eight in July. So she started school and luckily she could touch her ear. So it was cool with her. But then later in the year, I think about May or so, I decided to follow her from a distance to see where she was going every day and see the classroom she went to. Then one day I decided, you know, after playing with the soil and everything, I just walked to that school. It was not very far. It was called Emachin Primary School then, and then later it was changed to Leratum Primary School. And I would just go straight into the class, sit next to my sister, push her, you know, so that we share the same bench and listen to what they were saying. And the teacher just went on as if she didn't see me coming into the class, dirty as I was. But then she would teach and teach, and then towards the end of the day, when she asked questions, I raised my hand and answered correctly. Wow. So she wrote to my mother and father to say, uh, please let this child be clean. When the older sister baths, she also must bath and just join her and come to school. You don't have to buy uniforms because she'll not appear in any of our registers. So that's how I started school. Do you remember that teacher in particular? I don't remember the... I'm not sure whether it was Mrs. Nyati or Mrs. Litwaba. Wow. But yeah, somewhere there, sub A, sub B, were taught by Litwaba at some time, Nyati sometime. Yes. Wow, that's an interesting story. I've never heard actually the first time that I'm, I'm hearing of using your, you know, your arm, you know, just to measure yeah. whether you can touch your ear. I, I'm, I'm sure this would be first as well for mm, viewers. It was a way to, to delay hear. us, you know, so that we grow old before starting school. <laughs> it was during the apartheid era. Wow. So the later 
you started school the more tamba you are going to be. <laughs> wow, this is a, such an exciting I mean episode. I, really, this is you know I've just become a better person now that mm. at least I know about that. And, and then now fast forward, you know, like you went through you know like your your normal schooling, and then you matriculated at the age of fifteen. 15 already? 15, what? yeah. How it happened is uh, I did sub A, well, like I said, I started around me also. Then sub B, I started wearing uniform, you know, and attending with the other children. Mm. Then standard one, I did standard one up to March, and then we closed. Then in April, they put me in standard two. Then we closed in June. And then in July, when you opened, I went to standard three. So I did those three classes in one year. And that's how I could manage to matriculate at 15 in Orlando High. By the way, even in Orlando High, I did from one uh, uh, from one up to June. Then and, 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 in July, and, I went to form two. M maybe just a quick one mm. for our viewers. I mean, like, especially the... The, the young ones that were born, you know, uh, maybe later. So when you talk about Form 1, we're talking about Grade 8. Grade 8, And yeah. we call it Standard 6, I mean, for us, because we call it Standard 6. Yeah. I think it was also Form 1, but yeah. I mean, like, we're now moving, yeah. you know, from, from, from there. I'm just clarifying Actually, that. Actually, in our time, yes. there was also, uh, after Standard 5, we did Standard 6. But then after I, pa uh, I went to Orlando High School, that standard six fell off, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, then uh, they reduced our primary education by one year. So from that standard five, you went to high school. Oh. Wow. So you matriculated uh, at Orlando, I mean, Orlando, Orlando High. High School yes. under uh, Principal T.W. Kambuli. I mean, the that was very, yeah, I mean, mm. that one was very known, I mean, well mm. known. I mean, like, who became as well the head of uh, Pace College, Community College? Yes. Yes, in Jablani and that, That's yes. Okay. So, so when you matriculated now at the age of 15, mm -hmm. so did you go straight, what, what happened then? Did you go straight to, to university? What? Yes, what? I did. Uh, somewhere, I can't remember which class, whether so standard five or standard six in primary school, ne? They told us about different professions. Yes. I was very much taken by being a medical doctor. So I went to, to the clinic, Orlando Clinic. I was a brave young girl. So I went to the clinic, I asked the doctors, what are the ups of being a doctor and the lows? And uh, do you work every day? Do you have off days? Then I heard that sometimes when you are off, you can be called to a clinic or a hospital for an emergency. And I thought, mm -mm, I like medicine, but I want some free time because I'm hoping to have many children and I want to have time with them. So I asked the doctor, which other medicine related course do you think I can do? And then the doctor told me about pharmacy. And I hadn't known about pharmacy. I had thought those people in white coats in pharmacies were actually doctors. So a lot of us just addressed them as doctor when we wanted to get any help there. So he is the one who told about uh, about pharmacy, and I think I fell in love with the idea. Wow! And, and then you so so you pursued that career yes, of being I a did. pharmacist in that yeah. immediately oh. after leaving. Orlando High School, I went to the floor. Oh, okay, mm. okay. And, and how did you find it? I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the choice of your, you know, yeah. the choice that In you made. In my first year, I got my greatest shock, you know. I had always been passing, skipping classes, and doing this and doing that. But there, I failed botany. In my first year. You know, botany is the study of plants. Yes. And I didn't understand, how can I feel this thing? You don't even think, <laughs> you just memorize things and you write and you know, you should pass. So uh, during the year, we were told that that particular lecturer in, in botany enjoyed failing people. He was a racist, he was saying our hair, is, uh, our brains are short. 
and little like our heads, kelt like I, we don't understand things and we think we do, you know, a lot of nonsense like that. So he would give, after every test, he would give us our, our papers. Ne? He said, just check the edition. You know, maybe question one is five points and this one you got three. Just check the editions, but don't ask me why you got five out of 30 or five out of 50. So clearly, it was a racist thing. Many of us failed botany and yet passed physics, which was much more difficult, you know. So I had to repeat that botany. I almost changed my mind about pharmacy. Repeating was very painful for me, especially because I thought I could teach that lecturer something about botany. Because he had, you know, he memorized everything. Mm -hmm. He was the type of lecturer who, who would just look at the time and maybe just the, uh, at the end of the lecture, mm -hmm. maybe he was supposed to come to full stop. He'll just go. And then the following day when we start, he says full stop, <laughs> you know. He was like that. So I thought, you know, there's a lot I can teach this man, but if I can tell him, <laughs> surely I'll never ever pass botany. Yes. Yeah, so I didn't. I, I just kept quiet and passed normally the wow. following year. Wow, no, thank you very much for that background, for, for giving us that, you know, that, that, that part as well. So I just want to find out maybe wh when you, now when you, when you were, you know, at Teflop Tuff, University Tuff, yeah. and then you graduated, you know, some, I mean, like a few years later, how did you find joining the, you know, like the, uh, the, 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 was it the retail pharmacy or the hospital, you know, after graduating, how was life after that? Was it, how, how did you find it? Yeah. Uh, now as a pharmacist, oh. Yeah, after the result, I had applied to Adcock in Graham. And then after the results came out, I went to them to show them that I had passed. Yes. Then they said, uh, and to tell them that I was expecting my first child in June, I was due in June. So they said, okay, we are taking you, but you can't start now because we have to build you a toilet. You are the first black woman that we are employing here at uh, Adcock and Graham. They have white women, colored women, Indian women, but not African women. So. I didn't start immediately, but I was paid for that month. Yeah. Be because they had to build a, a bathroom special, for you, a special? Yeah, for me. Was it really like, like yes. that? Yes. Yes. A a and now, geez. So, so, so starting then, yeah. after they'd completed, you know. After you, they've you, completed the toilet and bathroom, then I went there to work. And uh, luckily for me, they wanted uh, a BSc graduate who had graduated in chemistry. Yes. So I had a friend, Konji uh, Sibati. She had BSc from uh, BSc from Teflop, yes. and she had majored in chemistry, but she wasn't a pharmacist. Yes. So. They, they employed her. So at least we were two using that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I mean, yeah. really, so, so, so we, yeah, we, I never experienced something like yeah. that. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I was one of the fortunate ones. Yes. And then then yes. I left uh, in February 1977 during uh, the unrest, you know, the yes, 19, after the 1976 unrest, it was still hot at that time. And I forgot to mention that going to Teflop brought me close to uh, the South African politics. Yes. And, you know, whilst we were de there, we, we beat up a, a spy who was taking pictures during the pro Fre Freddy Morali. And we broke her camera. It was an expensive camera. We thought, mm -mm. She must be a spy. Why is she taking pictures and hiding with a towel, you know? And then since then, the police were after me. And also, 
My husband had been uh, chased out of Teflop after the Tiro. You remember Tiro, Kobotse Tiro, after his famous speech. My husband was one of those who were expelled from Teflop. Oh. So we decided to uh, escape into Botswana and go into exile. Mm. And when I was there, they couldn't hire me in the hospitals because I was a refugee, I was not a citizen. Yes. So I found a job from another South African who was uh, owning retail pharmacies in, in Botswana. He decided that he wanted to open one in Francistown. So he called me to come and manage his own in Silibepigwe whilst he's opening a new one because I was not experienced. Then after about three months or so, I went to Francistown mm -hmm. to take over. And I really enjoyed pharmacy. You know, the interaction I had with people, I liked it more than if I was a I would have been a hospital pharmacist because there, when you are a hospital pharmacist, especially at that time, all you did was just dispense medicines, you know, prescribed by a doctor. Yes. But and there, I had the opportunity to talk to my patients and maybe initiate their treatment. Yes. I was the only pharmacist in Francistown. The entire town? The entire town, uh, yes. Yeah. And, and maybe for, for, for those, maybe um, uh, of our audience who don't understand what pharmacy, ph what, what, what a pharmacist does and what is a pharmacist, maybe what, what did you say? How do you explain what, what is a pharmacist and why is it important to have a pharmacist? Okay. A pharmacist is, during our training, we're taught how to make medicines, whether from synthetic chemicals or from plants, how do we extract the active ingredients from plants? That's why I could work at, at Cogin Graham. Yes. They were manufacturing pharmaceuticals, yes. you know, and toiletries. Yeah, uh, as a pharmacist, I, w I was supposed to just make sure that they use the correct ingredient and the correct quantity as per the recipe. Yes. Yeah. And then in retail pharmacy, uh, the pharmacist dispenses scripts from doctors. Yes. But again, you advise people. Yeah. And because, as I said, I was the only pharmacist in town, people came to me even with social problems, you know, because I, 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 I'm a good listener. Yes. I used to listen and Sometimes I'll tell them after they finish that I think you need to see, you know, a psychiatrist, a social worker, or, or a medical doctor, whatever. But I realize the importance of uh, listening, listening really well. Yes. Yeah, that some healing comes from your listening. Even before you say, I recommend this, the person already feels better because you just listened to them. Wow. So, mm. so, so in terms of the personality, you know, like type mm. as a person, if you really want to be a pharmacist, I mean, for those people who want to help people and that, so, so in terms of you need to be, you need to be a good listener, as you have said. You, a good you, listener. Yes. And, mm. and, and also you need to be a people's person. A people's yeah. person, yes, yeah. so that they are not afraid of you. Yes. They feel free to come and they know you are not going to t ridicule them and tell them their problem is too little yes. or maybe they uh, make them feel like they're stupid. That's why they are like this. You know, you have to show them respect yes. so that they can respect you back. Wow. And, and, and also, maybe just moving on, you know, on, on the same path, looking at yourself as a pharmacist. What did you say? Do, do you think there are people who go to pharmacies just to get some medication uh, simply because they are, maybe they could have done something better with their lives? Do, do you find that there are people who rely heavily on, on, on pharmacies, you know, than maybe on things that they can 
you know, that, that they could have done differently in terms of like exercising and, and eating well. And that, what did you say on that one? Is, yeah. is there a way that you can avoid that as someone who's been there in the call front? Yeah. In my experience, I noticed that some people come to the pharmacy after making their own uh, decisions. They come there to check whether the pharmacist will endorse what they've decided. Okay. Or maybe the pharmacist will tell them something different. Like, for example, in, in Botswana, people live in towns ne? and villages where they plant their vegetables and things are all far away from where they live, you know. So when they go to these cattle posts, they call them cattle posts, ne? sometimes a person will go for five days. And whilst the person is there, I'm talking about that time when I was still there in, 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 in Botswana, yeah, in the 70s and 80s, you find that they have very little clean water to bath. Okay. So the person will stay there and not bath for the duration of uh, his stay there. Okay. Then the skin will start itching. You know Botswana is very hot. The person will be sweating and itching. And then after that, he comes to the pharmacy to say, you know, I've noticed that every time I go to Botswana, my, start, my skin starts itching. Can you give me something to prevent the itching? You know, I would politely tell them that, no, it's because you don't wash when you are there. The skin needs to be washed. So make sure you carry some clean water. Yeah. Get a container and then pour a little water, use soap, wash and see. You don't need tablets to prevent any itching. We treat itching, but you don't <laughs> take tablets in advance. <laughs> yeah, no, mm. So I had to show respect when I'm telling them this. Yeah, because so. if I didn't... You know, I would sour relations between the, the, the patient and me. Uh, and now, w when you look at that, uh, I think that's just one example. W what did you say, you know, based on your experience as well, the, I mean, is the importance of exercising, for an example, mm. and like meditating, you know, uh, eating good food? Yes, we know certain things are expensive and that, but w what did you say from from someone who has dealt with these sort of like with these drugs as it were mm. you know um, what did you say is the importance of that based on your experience where people and, and do you think people are really doing enough you know for that I mean like to to you know just to help themselves no uh, yeah then very few people knew about exercise and the importance of keeping your body fit, yes. you know. But I realize that, thank God, now more people are exercising and they care about what they eat. And, you know, and some people didn't even try because they thought eating balanced food is more expensive yes. than just eating whatever comes along. But I, I started classes when I was there to teach them how to cook with the things that are available and, and change the, the food from boring to a little bit interesting yes. and cooking food in different ways. Because there, there were people who were cooking the same food the same way, you know, Monday, Tuesday, every day, the lunch is exactly the same taste. Mm -hmm. the, and I, I, I spoke to, to them uh, about oh. yeah, the importance of different kinds of food, you know, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and, you know, and I, I, I imparted some knowledge to them. And, and they, they, they embraced me wow. in a big way. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is exciting. And, 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 and by the way, uh, as Verinda, the neuroengineer, I'm, I'm an author of this book called The Neuroscience of Effective Leadership. So when I talk about effective leadership, I'm not just only talking about leading other people, but I'm talking about even leading yourself. Because when you look at things like having a good diet, when you look at things like exercising, when you look at things of having good thoughts, 
that has a huge impact in the chemistry that we have in our heads because our brains are swimming in neurochemicals. I mean, we're talking about different chemicals, other is dopamine, we're talking about serotonin, mm. that is really responsible for mood, and we're talking about oxytocin, that is responsible for, you know, for bonding. And we're talking about all the other chemicals that are very important in fighting or neutralizing stress chemicals, like your, dop I mean, like your adrenaline and your cortisol, because we are always, you know, trying to do certain things and fighting against certain, you know, uh, uh, difficult situations. And because of that, we end up having situations where our, our bodies and our brains are swimming in these chemicals that become toxic. And then we end up being so stressed. So we are just talking about all those important things about why is it important to take good care of yourself? Because people don't get to understand that and they look at, uh, at situations that they think things are going to just sort them, solve themselves out. And it doesn't happen like that. And, and now, looking at yourself, you are 71 years old now. Yes. And, and, and I'm just so excited about that. And, and, and what reminds me of that is that about 10 years ago, you were 61 years old. And I happened to attend one of your graduation ceremonies and you said to me, Veli, you've got to be there. And you invited me and I felt so honored. And, and I was just so inspired you know by that i mean seeing people wearing their you know their gowns and their belts and their gears i mean there was such an exciting thing i didn't wear mine for for some reason and mm. my apologies for that and uh, just take us through that at the age of 61 years old mm -hmm. you 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 graduated with your master's degree yes take us through that i mean like why would, at the age of 61, already, and you said, you know, you wanted to do that because people don't have time for that. What really drove you, you know, to, to, to pursue that qualification? Mm. Because I had completed my first degree in 1974, you know, when I was 21. <laughs> 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 and I, I went to work. Then later on, um my 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 immediate boss at work by then i was now in uh, administration pharmacy administration for the Gauteng department of health i was in the head office then my immediate supervisor decided to study you know mm -hmm. and she took time off very often she wasn't there and, you know, it, we're working very hard there, you know. And we thought, but if she can do this, why can't we, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with my other pharma pharmacist. And then by then, I think it had been over 30 years since I got my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my first degree. But I, th I thought, let me just take it, you know, because Medunsa was offering a postgraduate post diploma in pharmacy, mm -hmm. hospital pharmacy management. Yes. So we registered. And, and I passed with wow. a distinction. Wow. Yeah. So wow. I was proud of myself and because I'm never one to be afraid to talk. You know, behind closed doors we're saying, but why do they make this post-grade diploma so difficult and so intense and yet it's just a diploma. Why don't we approach them and ask them to, to start a master's program in hospital pharmacy management and as usual I'm the one who raised the topic <laughs> yeah, to our facilitator and she said uh, okay, if, if Medunsa does that it how many of you will go? I raised my hand and I think about five or six others raised their hands. Later on, before we graduated with the uh, diploma, Medunsa responded. They said, okay. They have decided what they can add, what more they can add to what we have done for, for one to qualify for a master's degree. Now I was the one who had raised my hand and, you know, asked them. So I felt I have to go ahead and do the master's degree. Wow. Yeah, so I did. It was not easy because 
we're working hard, as I say, I was going to the whole, you know, uh, uh, Johannesburg province, not only Johannesburg, but Gauteng, you know, I went as far as um, Van der Bill Park, and, and I also went to Pretoria, um, what are those places that we have forgotten? Harangua was yes. the little end them. You know, they were far away. Yes. So we were going there. By the time mm -hmm. I reached home in the evening, I was tired, but I had to do this master's because I always believe that whatever you start, you must finish. So I finished and graduated when I was 61. Wow, you've just heard it. Whatever she starts, I must finish. She must finish it. I must finish it. And, and, and I think out of this, I mean, there are three things that come to mind. And, and mm -hmm. I think number one, from what uh, Sis Make has just shared with us, number one is that you must never ever give up on your dream. Pursue your dreams and whatever you start, you must finish. And then number two, it is that you're never too old to learn. So there's always an opportunity for you. Like we normally say that it's not about the dog in the fight. It's not the size of the dog in the fight that determines where the war is going to go. But it's the size of the fight in the dog that determines that. The dog can be so huge and big, but if it's got, if it's got no fire in it, nothing is going to happen. It's about the size of the fire that you have inside of you. And then number three is that it may always appear to be a solo act but it always takes teamwork. I mean, she's just indicated that, mm. you know, she was with people, I mean, around and she, she raised the hand. You, you're the first one, I mean, yes, I know. I mean, with your kind heart, I mean, you always, you know, take, you know, like take a lead, you know, when it comes to issues of importance. And, and you, 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 when you believe in something, you, you really, you know, you take a lead. Yeah, in I, and, I go out and, and do the best that I can do. Now that you're 71 years old, knowing what you know already and what you have experienced, I mean, over the years, what advice would you give to a 25-year-old you? Or to someone who's 25 years old right now that is thinking that they've got it figured, I mean, figured out. You know, they've, they, they, they've got it covered. They, 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 they've got, you know, all the answers. For, for them to reach this age in a way that is, you know, that is, that, is, that is encouraging and that is inspiring. What advice would you give to them? Maybe in different facets of life, in terms of health, in terms of self-development, maybe in terms of spirituality, maybe in terms of relationships, because those are the pillars that are very important in us as humans to become the strong and to become the most useful and resourceful, I mean, like human beings. Maybe w what advice would you give to, to a 25-year-old person? Yeah, the first one would be uh, trust God in every situation mm -hmm. that you find yourself mm -hmm. and seek his uh, guidance. Yeah. yeah. And then remember also that he's always with you, down in the dumps or when you are happy, mm. when you are succeeding. But it's not only because of your efforts, mm. but it's because God helped you to do that, mm. made it possible for you to do, because he, he controls everything. Yes. So if you have difficulties, trust him. I know there, there are some who think, you know, they'll say, okay, let's just go and drink and drown our sorrows. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Face your challenges mm -hmm. in a sober manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at that time, what I used to do, well, when I was 25, uh, I was starting my first <laughs> job as a pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you are a woman, go through those beauty regimens, you know, must cleanse, moisturize, tone, and at night cleanse, moisturize, and nourish your skin. You can see my face. Oh. 75 years, wow. <laughs> 71 oh, yes, years, yes. Sorry. but in 75 years, if I'm not dead, I'll still be like this. No, you still want to be around. I can, yeah, yeah, I can assure yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, that, that's the time when 
you need to be more careful as to how you look so that no, no person should be able to look at you and say, ah, she's going undergoing problems. You need to look bright. And because you look bright, you are definitely going to get some compliments somewhere and they will cheer you up. Unlike if when you have problems, you dress in a drab manner, you know, and people, you know, remind you, what's happening to you, you know? Yeah, so look great. Yes. Look great and then you'll feel great. Absolutely. Later. So it means that when you talk about good health and you talk about good looks, like with a good skin and everything, especially mm -hmm. to women, I think it applies to almost everyone, everyone but especially yeah. to women. Yeah. It's about investment. I, yeah, invest invest in, in yourself. In yourself, yes. yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> as you go on, take any opportunity that you get of a uh, empowering yourself you know like is you hear how people are introducing computers in their offices what's a computer what does it do you know you, you never had a chance to use it find out how you can register so that you know you hear there's somebody who is coming uh, somebody doing a uh, internal decor decor in the in the houses and Find out how you can register. Do it. You are a pharmacist, you are a police officer, you are whatever. Go for these short courses. They will make you feel better. Yeah. And they'll add value to you. You can add them in your resumes because they might be looking for somebody with this profession, yet they know they have a problem in the field of how their offices look. So they always know that they can come to you and say, uh, can you please look at this? And, and, and it makes you feel good if you have achieved, Absolutely. you know. Yeah, it makes you feel good. Sometimes you find that it's a poor company, you know. They can't afford to pay you uh, as a, a home decor specialist. Yes. But it, it's, it's never bad to offer some help somewhere, you know, and, and, and know that we are doing it. God will pay you. God will pay you for some of these things. Oh. Like, like when you are waking and your superiors don't acknowledge you, you know, uh, they, they, they recommend somebody else for promotion and don't feel bitter. Even if it hurts, don't show them that you are hurt inside. Do your best. Continue doing your best. God will reward you. And a better opening will come somewhere, you know, it, which, which will just need somebody uh, fitting your description yes. and your experience. Okay. Yeah. So, so it means you need to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to be curious you need to about be curious. what's happening. And also yes. you, you mentioned the issue of you not focusing on only on what you have achieved and say, me, I'm just a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And then you forget about everything else. Try to learn as much as possible. Try to, you know, do those, you know, enroll for those short courses as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you and for also that share that information with other people. Maybe it might not be in a formal place where you are training them, but, you know, you can invite a few friends or, or neighbors or whatever and then talk about this thing and hear what their views are, they'll surprise you. They may come with better views than you know. And then you all ga you gain, they gain. Yes. And whenever you see them prospering in what you started talking about to them, it makes you very happy, very happy, it's even crazy. if they didn't pay you. But the fact that you know they are where they are, because of you. Let me tell you uh, just a short story. In 2022, a certain lady uh, that I've seen and admired on Facebook, you know, she's now 53 or so, but she doesn't look it. You know, she just wrote a post there on Facebook saying, yeah, uh, a lot of you guys, she, she, she likes posting, you know, mm -hmm. have asked me uh, why am I the way I look, 
you know why am i healthy why am i staying young why uh, she says there's a lady that used to to work in she mentioned the pharmacy i was in and she was from south africa she actually put my name she says when i was young i used to accompany my mother Every, she, she lived in a village not far from Francistown. Yes. Yeah, Donota village. Yeah. I used to accompany my mother whenever she went to Francistown and it was not school time. Then she would just leave me at the pharmacy. She knew that I enjoyed watching this woman. The way she walked, the way she dressed, the way she spoke to people. The, you know, I wanted to be like her. I wanted to be, and I told my mother, you know, next time you go, don't leave me. And then she was excited. She says she was excited because whenever there was nobody coming to talk to me in the dispensary, she would come as a child. I don't remember her because, as she says, she was still a child. Then she would ask me, what course did you do? What in, in how do you eat? What do you do? What, you know, all these yes. things. And I answered her. She asked me, what do you like? I said, yo, I, I collect a lot of jewelry and perfumes. And then she posted her, her perfumes and her jewelry. She said, this is what I have after, huh. after what I was told by this lady. And she said, wherever you are, thank you. You, you can't imagine how happy I was. Wow. You can't wow. imagine how, you know, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and I, I, I always told people that, you know, I'm this age and I'm like this. When I aim to be better than me, even my children, I said by this age I had achieved this when I aim to be better than me. Even my, my, my workers, if I have a helper at home and I realize that this person is intelligent, she, she, she can be something better than a helper. I told them. And I even said, if you want to go to school, maybe uh, I can help you and then get another helper. You know, and some of them achieved much, much more than I did. But they always remember that they are where they are because of me. And this lady that I'm talking about, she does the same. Wow. Yeah, wow. if she realizes there's talent here or intelligence here, she, she does whatever it takes yes. to help that person to go up. And whatever you do to people, God increases you. Absolutely. Mm. I, and I think you've touched on these few things and I know that we're going to just maybe share some few of mm. those. But just to remind those who have just joined, you know, uh, us in this is that always develop yourself. Always look at how you can increase, you know, your value and also look at let it not just be about you, but also get to share with other people because you don't know the difference that you're going to make in people's lives and even though people may not say thank you to you there are those that you always talk in my world about people who always look at you incognito they always check you out you know uh, in private they never d declare that uh, we are doing a good job and that those people it's okay but god is there on your side i mean he's the one who's going to increase your territory and uh, what, what, what else that comes to mind that maybe you'd like to add to a, a 25 year old and yeah. even those who are even 50, you can still pick up some few things and, and be able to be a better person. Yeah. Actually, before they <clears> reach <throat> the, age of, the age of 25, if I get a chance, I tell them, you can never love two people at the same time. Yeah. Keep just one. Yeah. One is more than enough. But if the relationship doesn't work or the person becomes abusive, whether emotionally, physically, or in whatever way, break the relationship, stay without a relationship to heal from that one, and then start again with one. It never pays to have more than one. Yeah, yeah never yeah. pays. Respect your body, like it, fall in love with yourself. And if you do that, then you, you'll never go wrong. It's people who don't love themselves or respect themselves 
who will have a lover this town in this town, another one there, another one there. So do respect that. yourself and respect that for longevity yourself. as well. Yes, for yes. longevity as yes. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else? Uh, did you have something else? Never try to be someone else. Mm. Work towards being a better you. When God created you, He wanted you to be you. And He had a plan for you. Try to find out what that plan is for you and, 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 and do it. You will always fail if you try to be someone else. Be the better you. Uh, check, check yourself what you lack. Yes. Like me, when I was 47 in the year 2000, I, I thought, no, I need to go and learn computers. <laughs> I, I don't know anything. I always do things manually. And, and I, I looked for a, co a college. I saw PC college. Uh, where I had an option of coming only on Saturdays or you could go in the evenings, maybe three times a week, I couldn't do that. So I went for the Saturday option where I spent almost the whole day on Saturday at Carlton Center. Yes. I was the only one above 25 in that class, but I stayed until and, I completed. And you didn't feel any less. You didn't no. feel any... And, 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 and this thing is something that is in you. Yeah, it is yes. in me. And all of them could print, you know, with, with all fingers. I used one. You, you have been counting. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. But, but I completed the course. Yes. And that allowed me to... Shortly after I got my certificate and graduated there, there were openings for three pharmacies at central office. Yes. Uh, and they needed somebody who, who was computer literate. So I had everything that they needed, if not more. So I applied and I went there. So that inconvenience that I felt maybe in the first Saturday, maybe over the first two Saturdays, was nothing compared to the fruits. Yes. I got when yes. I when I went to work in central office. Yes, mm. it's never too late to improve yourself. Absolutely, mm. I, and, I, and I really love this because I mean this is something. So, don't lock yourself down. Sure. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit your abilities because we've got we've got them in abundance. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of choosing which one you'll go with at the time, yeah. and, and and I think that's something that's important. Uh, also, maybe just one or two things, maybe still that you'd like to add? Live for today. Okay. Because yesterday has passed. Yeah. You can't relive really what happened yesterday. Okay. Especially if it was bad or sad. Mm -hmm. Take whatever lesson you can take from that negative uh, experience yes. of yesterday. Yes. And go on with life. Live for today because you don't know whether you'll be here tomorrow. Yes. If you keep postponing things, you know, I'll do it tomorrow, you procrastinate, you might end up not finishing anything that you start. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, what a, t what a treat, you know, what a time that you are having here. And you know that time is always uh, not playing ball. You know, you know, it always limits us, you know, in doing this. But I, I truly believe that this is this is part one, and, <laughs> and and I'm sure that part two is coming up. And and I think for me, what I'm just so interested in is talking to someone who has really been through a lot, and someone who's been down this journey, and 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 looking back and saying, how can I be able to save those who are where I used to be. And I, I used to think that, no, maybe I knew better. But life humbled me. Life showed me that, you know, I could always know more and better. I, I feel so privileged and honored once again. And maybe just a few questions, maybe just one or two questions before we close. I just want to find out from you, looking at the state of leadership, you know, just across... Uh, I'm talking about family leadership, self-leadership, even in corporate. I mean, you were you, you, you experienced leaders. What did you say 
especially maybe in a corporate sector or in a, you know, uh, uh, whether you're talking about a hospital or wherever you've been, what did you say is good leadership? What did you say is effective leadership? What kind of a leader that makes people bring out the best I mean, in them? The, the leader that really you look at and say, wow, this is the leader that makes things happen. Yeah, I would say uh, respect okay. should be uh, one of the very, very important points. Okay. Respect even your employees. Let's say yes. you are the one employing everybody in this. You are the highest authority in this company. Yes. Yeah, or uh, establishment. Yes. Respect them and give them the opportunity to, to, to be able to talk to you and come up with a suggestion. I like the idea of suggestion boxes now yes. in a lot of companies. You know, they have complaint box and suggestion box there. And now, uh, if you are working with them, make them feel free to suggest something. They can tell you something that you are not aware of yes. if you allow them. Yes. But if you talk down to them and you say, uh, Yes, uh, you know, I'm the one who decides everything. I'm the one who, even when they see that now the company is going the wrong way, it's going to sink, they won't tell you. Oh. They know they lose their jobs, but they won't tell you. They s they'll say, because of his pride, let him bite the dust with wow. this company. Yes. So inclusive management is what I'm talking about. Yes. You, you, you guide them, you lead them, but give room for, for them to say their suggestions and opinions. Don't feel offended if one of your employees, employees sounds uh, cleverer than you, more intelligent yes. than you, because you know, he could be actually <laughs> more intelligent <laughs> than you. Yeah. And if you give him a chance, he will uh, bring positive change to the company. Yes. Or he'll come to your office and tell you something that when you um, uh, implement, the company blooms yes. and grows. And you are surprised one day you are chosen by some uh, uh, body that that you are not aware of as the most progressive leader in yes. this type of establishment. Yes. Whereas they don't know your secret. Your secret is that junior worker. Yes. So after whatever they've suggested to you works, reward them. Yes. Reward them so that they can be, you know, they should feel like they belong and, uh, you know, like it's one big family and they own the establishment you know yes that way they are your security as well wow yeah. so so what you've said what you've just said now is that <clears throat> you need to be you need to trust your employees mm -hmm. you have to listen to them mm -hmm. you need to you know uh, create an environment where they can be free to come and make some suggestions yes. to you about how you can be a better person. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if there are people who appear to be like bright, bright sparks yes. or even more smarter than you, give them space, Yes, you know, and, and because they will make you shine. Mm -hmm. And I think on that, I think that's where we come to the end, yes. you know, of our, of our discussion. You know, and, and before we leave, you know, it's, it's something that we do here just to ensure that everyone who's been with us, he leaves our audience with something. Just the question that I want to ask you is, maybe in one sentence, how would you love to be remembered? What words would you like people to say when they think of you or they think about you? Long after you are gone. Long whatever. after I'm yes. gone, yeah. I would like them to remember me for the lessons they got from me. You know, sometimes it's people that I didn't say anything to, yes. but maybe they were watching. You know, I want them to, to have good memories of me. 
and to say, you know, uh, if it were not for, you know, that old lady or whoever, yes, I wouldn't be where I am now. I am better off because of her influence. Wow. Maybe she knows, maybe she doesn't know. But I want them to remember me that way. A and to share, you know, yes. to share what they have with other people. If you are stingy, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're going to be poorer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. you're going to be poorer. Uh, it's a formula. It's a formula I don't know from where. If you give, you get. Yes. And you own more things than that person who is stingy. Yes. And that person will never, ever be happy. Because he's so stingy, he's afraid of losing what he has. You know, he's thinking of how can I rob the next person so that I can become even richer. Yes. And yet they're stingy. They don't enjoy what they have. But give us, enjoy what they have. Ms. Mashile, what an honor. What a pleasure to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, the word says, Blessed is the hand that gives than the one that just receives. So when you are always wanting to, to receive things without giving, that's called greed. So you need to have an open heart. You need to open your heart and you have to be able to make this world a better place than you found it. So for me, Velinda, the neuroengineer, I'd like to say thank you so very kindly for joining us. And I just can't wait for the next coming session that we're gonna have. This is just episode one. And episode two, we're gonna be talking about everything about the neuroscience of effective leadership, where minds are being transformed from a place of mental darkness to mental light. So, until next time.